Hi, folks. I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Hip labrum tear, how to assess and rehab at home. Uh, we're going to show you some steps that you can take to, well, we're going to show you how you can even diagnose it to some sure. extent. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're also going to show you steps that you can do to try to help maybe temper it a little bit. Right. That. Yeah, and I did see it on studies. I thought that maybe you could get through it without having surgery and continue on with uh, with life in a normal way. So yeah, we, don't, we don't know that. It's going to all depend on the you know some of the defects that you might have in there right. that you might have been born with, um, like a shallow socket. Right. Or, and or so. how bad the labrum's tore. Right. It could be a, a real severe tear or a real minor yeah, one, which all takes some. If it's folded up on itself. Well, we should right. probably show people what, what some of these things are. But before we do that. There you go. Yeah. I see them too, Bob. If you are new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. There you go. Also, go over to Facebook and like us because Brad and I like to be liked. Yeah. I'll keep it simple. Okay, Bob. All right. We're talking about the hip labrum, which the hip is here, so we know that's it. And it's right in here. I'm going to come up with the, the other skeleton. We don't have a name sure. for this one, uh, so you can see this. Now, I do want to mention there was uh, someone who made a few comments over the last few months about doing this video. And I kind of looked it over the first time because I thought we did one on the hip labrum. And I looked through our archives. And I we did. We, we did one on the shoulder. See, later. Right. We did on the shoulder. Yeah. Yep. So here we got the hip, and we'll make it complete. So if you look at the hip, the labrum. There, we don't have a labrum on the skeleton because the labrum is uh, a fibrous uh, piece of cartilage. Cartilage, almost. and it goes. You got that in, Lonnie? Right along this black line here is where the labrum is, and it goes all the way around. Okay, and what it does, it, it helps provide some shock, shock absorption. It helps uh, keep the lubricant and lubricate the joint. Um, it also helps um, stabilize, stabilize the it, joint. Right. Yeah. So it's got a number of jobs, and it's, it's important to have. And it's, it can be injured oftentimes through trauma, say an auto accident where your knee goes into the uh, dashboard, sure. uh, repetitive motion where you go to an extreme, say like a gymnast, or someone where they're maybe abducting repetitively, sure. that kind of thing um, can well, relate to that. Well, I had a patient yesterday, Brad, that she was born with a really shallow socket. So you have the ball here, right. and you have the socket. And if that's the case, what happens is that it can actually pinch on there. Uh, yep. um, and, and also the shape of the socket and all those things come into play. Sure. Like, or the shape of the head of the, the bone. The right, finger. right. So. so there we got the labrum, how it can be damaged. And often, uh, the, the, the study did say that uh, more females actually have a right. labrum tear than males. I'm not sure if it's the shape of the pelvis. I'm I sure think. the pelvis and, and the, uh, the Q angle of the knee right. and stuff like that. So it can so, all play a role. So how do you know if you have a labrum tear? Remember that time about two years ago I had really bad hip pain yeah. and, and you did treatment on it? And, and I was using crutches, it was so bad, right. for about two or three days. Thought maybe it was a labrum tear. And the pain went away after about the third day, and it hasn't bothered me since. So obviously, it probably th wasn't labor. It did seem like you were getting a little bit of impingement there in your hip at that time. Sure. But, uh, so you want to show a test on me, Brad? Sure. So. Yeah. Now, uh, you can do scans for labrum tear, and people oftentimes think that if you get an MRA or MRI, that you're going to know for sure whether you have a, a tear. You would think you would. But it's not true. Right. Uh, they found studies up to 30 to 50% of MRIs are false positives. Wow. You know, and they found out they, they, they operate on... They end up going in there and they find out it's not torn. Right. And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, the, was the MRA a little more... Right. A little the, more accurate than the, the MRA. MRA yeah. uh, magnetic resonant angiogram is more sure. de dependable for this particular okay. uh, structure. So... Uh, this is how one of the, this is what's considered to be the best test for uh, a manual test. So you get the person supine. This is called 90-90 position. Right. I'm going to grab the hip here and I'm going to internally rotate it. That means go this direction so the foot comes away from the other leg, and then I'm going to adduct and go towards the center line this way. And if that creates pain, it's a positive sign. Yeah, and I just had a lady yesterday, a young lady who that was positive. It also felt like a pinching to her. Sure. So, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Right. So, so if you're on this one, you're going to turn it this way and go this way. Right. 
So the foot's right. going to go out that right. way. And it's going to so. be good to test both and compare one side to the other. Um, because again, it's not 100%. Just because that's positive doesn't mean you have a torn right. labrum. It, it means it's indicative of it. Right. That it, it, it's one know, more made. reason to think you might. Right. So. The surgery then, Brad, is usually arthroscopic, usually, yep. and and, uh, and they'll go into scopes, and you know, you know, they could cut you open and, and do it that way too, and surgically stitch the labrum. And to be honest, I didn't look in the research on what they do most right now, but because we're not interested yeah. as therapists as research, we're more interested in preventing that surgery. Right. They they might debreed it or repair it, or they might repair the bone even. Sure. So there's lots of different things. All right. But. So, so this is the non-surgical therapy option right. now is what we're doing. So, so exercises. I'm going to use this for balance. So the first thing you're going to try to do is just see if you can balance. Let's say this is going to be my involved leg, the leg that's painful. Oh, did we talk about the location of the pain is typically anterior. in the groin. Yeah. Yep, here or in the groin area. That's where it normally is. Which, interestingly, my patient, her pain, a lot of it is out here, which makes me think she's compensating and that muscles are, are starting to hurt out here because of this thing that's going on. Right. So we're going to try to treat some of the muscles there as opposed to treating the, the, uh, it, the labrum itself. Sure, and maybe it's not a labrum tear. Right, maybe okay. it's not a labrum tear. So exercise, we're going to start out with one leg balance, okay? Can you balance on one leg? Now, if any of these are painful, they irritate the problem, you're not going to do that, them. That is the key. It's got to be pain-free. Right, you know, so. sure. Now, you don't have to have a stick. You can have a chair in front of you or hold on to a tabletop or a cupboard. But you're going to see if you can balance. I'm going to use this for balance. You could use it in either hand. If it's the right leg, usually you have better balance than the left hand. And we're going to balance it. And once you can get to the point, you know, you might need two hands. And if that works good, 15 to 30 seconds, go to one hand. You know, you might start out with one hand right away. And then you're going to see if you can start to balance like this. And on the good leg, if you could, you know, most people can go 30 seconds that are younger and fit sure. without any problem. You want to do about the same with the involved leg. Once you can, they're about equal without pain, then we're going to go to phase number two, which is get some muscles working around there with some dynamic movement. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a stretch band. Now you can use a, a, any kind of stretch band and tie some knots in it and try and maybe tie it to a a leg of a table. Sure. Um, we happen to have this so, device right here. It's called the wall anchor. The wall the anchor. anchor and, saw. Yep, it works really well. And uh, if you've got a Velcro uh, strap like this, really it works the best. Uh, so, again, yeah, what Brad was saying is you can take actual tubing or a band and tie it to something and tie it around your leg too and, and do the same thing. Sure. Here, so. Uh, one way or another, we're going to get this resistance here. Now, we're going to go in four different directions, the four primary planes of the hip, out and back like this. And we're going to do good, smooth, controlled motion, not, and again, li not like this. And again, pain-free. Pain good, good, Bob. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me on that because it and is really total important. straightforward yep. is what he's doing. He's not turning it out as he goes forward. Straight forward toward me. Right. So it lined up with his Right, like his I was going to kick him in the kneecap. Yeah. But I won't do that, Bob. I'm glad you said kneecap, Brad. So. <laughs> so. There we go. And 10 to 15 reps is adequate. They're going to turn 90 degrees. What's nice about this, it's a little bit of hassle to set this up, but once it's set up, you get you can do your strengthening in all four directions. Right. And it's, so it's very convenient. It, it really is. It, it's worthwhile to, to take the time to, to set it up correctly. So then, now you see he's going back into... You know, this is getting the uh, little bit of hamstring and, and hip extension, right? The, right. The, the glutes. Yep. So. And again, don't don't get this. We're not doing a pendulum swing. We're doing control extension and back to the neutral position. Again, 10 to 15. And if you need to touch your foot down for balance, that's fine. If you feel it too easy, you can start to do this type of a motion, which is a little more aggressive. It's going to work the hip a little more. And he's trying to keep the knee straight on this because what, what they've found, Brad, a lot of times is that the hamstring is over dominant on this and okay. they, they don't want it to be. They want the, 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 the glute and the hamstring to work together. Right. So, so, so don't do this. Yeah, don't do that, in other words. Right. Sure. Good point, Bob. So. All right. And then finally, this one gets the fourth direction hip uh, abduction. Very important on this one. Quite often weak on, on these cases. Uh, that and the hip flexion, those are the two that are often weak. Yep. Um, and um, again, he's pointing his toe straight forward. 
And again, not like this. And again, he's trying to not d to do this pain free. Right. So, all right, we need a chair for squats, Brad. Sure. I'll start getting that ready. All right. We'll take this off. There's another way we can do squats with a little less resistance if you have your wall anchor like this, which set up. Yep. Yep. And I'm just going to use the resistance from here, and I'm going to slide down. And the resistance actually pulls you back up. up Obviously, not all your weight, but it takes enough off to make it a little easier for you. And it's kind of nice to work that. It's a good way to start. And uh, also, the key when you have possibly a torn labrum, you don't want to go too deep on these right. at all. Right. Yeah, it should be pain free. Yeah. Yep. If and you start going deeper, you're going to probably get some pinching. Right. Don't even think about doing yep. this. Yeah. It's way too far because when you get in that flex position, is where you're more likely to irritate it. Good point. All right, so if, if you don't have anything like that, just standing here in good tall posture. You're, you're not and, gonna go over like this. And a good shallow squats yeah. again. Just trying to get some movement, some strengthening. Heat, or heat. Heels and toes are gonna be flat on the floor, and it's gonna be like this. Again, good posture. 10 of them is gonna be good enough, right. okay? All right. Now you want to do lunges, Brad? Oh, yes. Lunges. Now, Bob, you like to use yeah. them with the wall. Why don't you do them with that? Well, actually, I was doing it with this one, Brad. But, oh, the um, tall one. Yeah. Again, I like doing it with this just because it gives you a little, it helps you with your balance and makes it a little easier. Again, it's a good way to start. So I got it hooked up to a wall anchor a, a little higher up, and I just go backward like this. And I actually do a little bit of posture exercise, too, because... Actually, they talk about the core being weak. You get a little bit of core workout, a little bit of balance workout, you know, and so I'm going back like this, and this just works out really well. As you can see, I'm, the knee is not going in front of the foot. Right Brad, here. Do you want to point that out? Yep. You can do it again. Do it the other Sorry, way. Sorry, I was trying please. to do it slow, and I actually lost my balance. So the knee is not, it's there. If yeah. you go forward and make it incorrect, Bob. There, that yeah. would be too far forward. That stresses yeah. the knee and, and more hip. So don't go too deep on this. Bob's going yeah. pretty deep there. You may not go yeah, that. You can that you can just start off real shallow sure. like this. Sure. Whatever is pain free again, okay. And last but not least, we're gonna go once again to do some lateral motion with some dynamics. And you can do that with a loop too, right, Brad? Oh, yeah, Do sure. you have a loop? And I'm going to point this way because I want to go this direction. I don't know where our loops are, Brad. Do you know? Oh, there they right are right there. there. And actually, the loops work a little bit better, more efficient than this. But this works, too, if you have it handy. You, you go ahead and do this. And you're going to do that on both legs. If you Go ahead put the loop yeah, on, Yeah, we Bob. got these listed in our products below, the Sank Band. These worked out really nice. We like the quality of these bands. They, they hold up well. Um, not that they won't eventually break, but they hold up better than most other ones. So what are you doing, Brad? You're doing the right. Just lunges out and back, out, and you're gonna do five to ten of those. Again, squat down, but not too far. If you need something for balance, again, you can use a stick or have a chair in front of you. Sure. And you know you're gonna go both directions too. There you go. Kind of our old karate moves here, Brad. Oh, yeah. It all kind of relates together, position, Bob. So. Everything fits together in life. All right. All right. Don't, I, remember to take that off yeah, so I you don't go exercise. falling. All right. All right. So once again, enjoy with these exercises. I think they're going to help you out with that labrum. And Thanks for watching. Watch.